Avatar returns to theaters after 13 years with the newest film, Avatar The Way of Water. Let's see if this film is worth your time. Hey everybody, my name is Justin here. I try to watch everything that hits theaters and on streaming services. If you guys are like me, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for more up and coming content. Jake Sully and the Terry have formed a family and are doing everything to stay together. However, they must leave their home and explore the regions of Pandora. When an ancient threat resurfaces, Jake must fight a difficult war against the humans. James Cameron is known for creating these films that feel like a cinematic experience. Most of his films are massive. Terminator 2 to Titanic and Avatar. His film always implement new technology and just feel like an epic cinematic experience. Even if you don't like the films, you can't deny that he brings these films forth that bring people together and draw in the crowds. I wasn't the biggest fan of the first Avatar film. I appreciate it for its visuals. At that time, I would say it was like the best looking film ever. And going into Avatar The Way of Water, I wasn't as excited as other people were. I think I was more excited to actually see it since it was delayed so many times. I actually never thought that we would get the film. But here we are talking about The Way of Water. And this film really expands on that first film. That first film really set up the characters, the tension between the humans and the, the Navi race and the and the environmental message in there and the, the visuals it was a pretty decent film here the film is three hours long it expands on the world of pandora but also brings in a familiar threat and it resurfaces and challenges jake Sully and his new family within the film if james cameron sat down with me and said justin this is how i made the film this is how i came up with the visuals this is how it all came to be i still wouldn't understand it I I baffled with how this film looks. It is absolutely stunning. And that was the first film as well. I'm amazed that a film like this can be created. And it's just a person in a room wearing a suit and they are navigating certain things within that room and they turn it into this. It's some of the best things I have ever seen in a film. And you could really just hate this movie. It could be the stupidest movie ever made. But that visuals, you cannot deny that they are stunning. And there are so many thrilling sequences within this film that really push this film and really bring forth some epic visuals. Now the film takes a lot of the film takes place a lot around water. And we see uh, some of the characters diving underneath water or exploring the ocean on Pandora. Creatures that are there. So there are so many new styles that are brought forth to this Avatar world. And, and many times it just looks so real. I love that it explored the ocean and had this message of protecting the ocean. That first film had that message of protecting the forest. And the second film has about protecting the ocean. And James Cameron, if you watched all of James Cameron's films and even his documentaries as well, he has a love for the ocean and exploration as well. His two documentaries, Ghosts of the Abyss and Aliens of the Deep, explore the ocean. And here he implements his love for exploration and the ocean and filmmaking so well into here that you get a sense that uh, it's very important not only to the characters involved in the film but also to James Cameron as a filmmaker and as a person his love for protecting the ocean and exploring it as well is felt throughout this film just like the first Avatar film the last hour of it is just straight up action it's non-stop you have so many thrilling sequences the urgency is there the characters are put to the test the visuals are all over the place but you get that non-stop action that makes it worth watching for the first two hours you get the setup of the family and the villains within the story but then that last hour is just action non-stop you feel it it's entertaining and it's a good way to end the three hour film now that first Avatar film, I didn't think had the most groundbreaking story. And I feel the same way with The Way of Water. And I feel like a lot of times James Cameron has certain scenes to be like, look at these visuals. 
he's kind of feeling that he's done something really well and he wants to create these these big grand moments and so a lot of scenes within this movie are kind of just showcasing the visuals and the technology that he is using and he has every right to because he worked hard on this film but a lot of scenes when they get to the water or when they're exploring something new you have this score that's just so sweeping and then you have these scenes of these characters exploring things i think one way to look at it is these characters on pandora they're exploring new things and uh experiencing it for the first time but also on the other hand i think it's a lot of just like hey look at all these cool things i can do with the film i think james cameron did that with a lot of his films too titanic and the first avatar film he takes a chance to kind of showcase what is going on in the film but the story in here really centers around family and protecting the ocean. We have Jake Sully and the Teary and their children within the story. We see Jake Sully take on this new role of being a father. And there are some realistic, relatable moments with this character and how he's navigating being a father and protecting his children and not wanting them to venture so far off because he knows of the world of Pandora and the threats that could come to it. So I like how Jake Sully's performance was in here and how this character was explored. I don't think he had the most to do in here. I, he was heavily involved in the film, but I think he took a little bit of a step back in here and let the children really take over for this film. But I like his exploration. And the Terry was great in here as well. I felt like she was limited as well, but she fit nicely into the story and also protecting her children. The children in here had some conflict with other uh, characters that were involved in the different regions of Pandora when they went to the ocean. There was some conflict there trying to fit in. And, they, and these characters are very likable as well. We see that development for these characters. There's a character in here, a human character named Spider, and he's hard to kind of get involved with because he goes from being a good character to a bad character back to a good character and so I think he's just trying to find his place in this world he's accepted by the Navi race he enjoys being with uh, a lot of those characters but he's easily swayed to do other things in the film and that's a hard uh, journey to follow and a hard character to appreciate when he's kind of just back and forth in the film but I did like the character overall and kind of how he worked with the Navi race within the film. But with so much action and a lot of showcasing the world of Pandora, I don't think there was an emotional connection to this film watching this family leave their home to go to a different region of Pandora, the family unit. I don't think there was enough emotional scenes in here. I could tell by the writing and the direction of this film that it wanted to kind of have that emotional connection, but I just didn't feel that within this film. With all those action scenes and the, all of the visuals and showcasing and having these big grand moments, I think that it took away from having those deep personal emotional scenes within the film that explored this family and how hard and their struggles along the way because it is an interesting story and the world of pandora is explored so much in here you feel that world building you feel that it's going to the next level and you're excited for the potential of a third and fourth and fifth and how many james cameron wants to make you feel like the world is just going to build on top of each other and you're going to explore the different regions but when here you explore different regions and that world building is here but the characters and the story i feel like were thin and weak. I felt the same exact way in that first Avatar film that yes, it's stunning. It's a groundbreaking film. It's entertaining to watch, but the story, I feel like we've seen that before and it didn't really offer anything new. And that's the same thing for The Way of Water. Yes, it's a visually stunning film. There is some really intense action. I like the characters. It had some relatable moments and there were some twists and turns along the way, but the story and the characters growth and that development for most of them, I felt like was weak. I didn't have that emotional connection to these characters like I thought I would based on some of the trailers and the posters as well. But nonetheless, Avatar The Way of Water is another groundbreaking film from James Cameron. It's a film that deserves to be seen on the biggest screen possible. The visuals are truly amazing i don't understand how they were made i don't think i ever will but they are beautiful the ocean the creatures the action it is stunning to look at 
it's a film that if even if I gave it an F, I would love to rewatch it over and over again just on these visuals. And it was so fun to watch that first Avatar film. I saw it in theaters. I remember seeing it in a big packed theater and just thinking, wow, this is truly amazing what is in front of me. And I feel the same exact way with The Way of Water. Despite me not really caring much for the story, the characters are fun in here. Some of them take a little bit of a step back, but it's still a film that you need to go see and appreciate for what it is offering. So before I give you my score for Avatar The Way of Water, make sure to check out my channel. Here I do movie reviews, trailer actions, ranking videos, tier lists, all that fun movie related content that you see on YouTube. I do it all here. So hit that subscribe button to get it all in one spot. And if you can see where Avatar The Way of Water ranks amongst all the other 2022 releases I've seen this year, follow me on Letterboxd and there you can find my ranking. I'm gonna go ahead and give Avatar The Way of Water a B plus. Thank you guys for checking my review for Avatar The Way of Water. Have you guys seen it by chance? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below and stay tuned for more up and coming content like this. My name is Just Watches Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.